this morning shall carry power, shall carry fire and anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. It is another real privilege again for me to be your present this morning uh, to talk on the uh, topic in the life class, which is picture of greatness. And I pray that we should listen this morning and do the bidding that God will make us great in the mighty name of Jesus. Like I want to look at it, I want us to look at what is greatness. I want us to look at who is that person that is great. I also want us to look at it, that what are the signs when you want to be great and again the step of greatness. Uh, like I've written here that in every man that is born, there is a drop of greatness in, in him or in her. But the greatness that you are going to become, one, it depends on how well that you conceive it in your heart. Because if it is not in your mind, if you have not been able to conceive it, you cannot carry it. Again, it not depends on how well that you walk towards it. You cannot just say because it is dropped in your spirit or it dropped in its innate in your being that you are going to be great. You now find uh, uh, that a tree put a bench there and be waiting for you to be great. It does not happen. Praise the Lord. It is like the parable of the ten talents that we know so um, much in the Bible. My two twenty twenty five five. That he said to he one, he gave him ten. To another, he gave him five. To one, he gave him two. And we saw what they did with it. He said according to them, to them according to their several ability. God has given to you according to your several ability. It not depend on what you are going to do with it. And there is this controversy of the nature and the nurture. It is believed in some school of thought that it is that innate ability that is deposited in you that make you to become what you are. That what you are going to be does not actually stop at the nature. It has to be nurtured. That if you do not nurture that nature that is in you, you cannot get to where you are. Praise the Lord. And what of the, another thing I also want us to look that being great is, is differs. is across different fields of endeavor. We have those that are great in medicine. We have those that are great educationists. We have those that are great in industry. So it does not mean that because you want to be great, you must of necessity go and open a company, or you must of necessity be a doctor, or you must of necessity be a lawyer. You can be great in any way you are. Praise the Lord. I pray this morning that as this word drop into our heart, that we have the ability that we find a fertile ground to develop and germinate in our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I said there is a drop of greatness in the life of everyone which is likened to the parable of the ten talents in Matthew 25, 5. The Bible said, And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. That is exactly what God has done to you. He has planted that innate ability in you. It is what, how well you are, you've treated with it that will determine how how great you will become. It is whatever you do with the innate ability deposited in your inside that it amazes the height you can attain in life. It is the ability of a person to sit and discover fully the indie talent that God has given him or her that is a sure determinant of one achievement in life. If you, are, if you know the act of selling, you do not just, it doesn't just come, it is you that will discover it, that look, it's like I know how to do this thing very well. In the nature and nurture theory, it was concluded at the end of the day that the height attained by man is an interaction of both. It's not just because it was dropping your inside. If you do not nurture it to future, you are going nowhere. With your innate ability we are depositing in you, you will need to nurture that fruitness before you can be great. Praise the Lord. I pray today that God will give us the understanding so that we know exactly what was deposited in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we continue to nurture it, may we have an enabled environment to do that in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. As every man is born to be great, God is not partial. But for that to happen in the lifetime of a person depends on the challenges encountered and the victories through the journey of the life of the man. Because it's commonly said that as you lay your bed, so you lie on it. 
The surgeon of becoming great in the life of a man must of a necessity take process. You cannot just wake up one morning because it is discovered that you, are, you have element of greatness who want to be great. If you look at it, no newborn baby that is giving birth today that will just jump on by be running around the world. Even the doctor will take off. The nurses will abandon their post because it has never seen before. When a, when a kid is giving birth to, when a baby is giving birth to, the baby will have no muscles. The baby will first of all learn how to hold its head in a place. By the time it can do that, we learn how to sit. After learning how to sit, we learn how to crawl. We learn how to stand and before it begins to work. That is exactly what the nurturing of the talent that God has given to you. That is how it is. Praise the Lord. But the greatness that you do not carry in your mind and soul cannot happen to you. If you cannot picture your greatness in your mind, you cannot become it. Because if you begin to wake up and you have that mental picture that you are going to be great, it has to be constantly in your, in your mind. I remember when I joined Stockswash and I saw how people were dealing in shares and it just occurred to me that there will be a time that I want to get so much into this business that it will get to a time that people will ask that, look at Mr. Arona, what's his, what is he doing? They said, don't you know that he's a stockbroker? Praise the Lord. And that is exactly what is happening to me today. By special grace of God, I'm a stockbroker. Praise the Lord. A wise man once asked a question and it goes like this. He said, who is rich or poor? And the answer I said is a function of the state of the mind. First of all, you have to understand that wealth does not mean having a fat back account. Wealth is primarily the ability to create wealth. Say, for example, somebody can win lottery in gambling. Even if he wins a hundred million, he's not a rich man. He's a poor man with a lot of money. That is the reason why 90% of the lottery millionaires become poor again after five years. Because they did not nurture that greatness that God has put in their way. You also have rich people who have no money. Most of them are entrepreneurs. They are already on the road to wealth, even though they have no money, because they are developing their financial intelligence, and that is wealth. He also went on to explain how the rich and the poor are different. He said the rich may die to become poor, while the poor may kill to become rich. If you see a young person, who decide to train, who decide to learn new things, who try to improve himself constantly, know that he or she is on the path of greatness. But if you see a young person who thinks that the problem is the state, that the problem is uh, Buhari, that the problem is his uncle, and the problem is his village people, and he thinks that the, all the rich people are thieves, he criticizes constantly, you know definitely that that person will not be great. Is going to be poor in Jesus' name. When a young man starts turning truth upside down because of physical money, or corrupt politicians can offer, or for what corrupt politicians can offer him, that is extreme poverty because he sees no way if he does not grab the opportunity. To him, if he does not grab the opportunity that is given to him, he will not be great. The very moment the devil discovers that you are on the path of greatness, he tries to encumber it with besetting worldly things that stagnate destiny. What are the steps that, what are those things that we know that one is going to be uh, uh, great, signs of greatness? We first of all saw it in the life of Saul. I have so many, but because of our time, I just have to touch on this once more. Saul, the son of Kish. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 9 2, it said, and he had a son, which is Kish, whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, it was higher than any of the people. The signs of greatness were already shown in the young man as Saul. 9.14, and they went up into the city, and when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came up against them for to go up to the high place. We know the story. He was innocently sent to go and look for the lost asses. 
of the father. 15, say, now the Lord has told Samuel in his year a day before Saul came. Meaning that even God was going to establish the greatness of Saul in his life by even going far to even tell Samuel that Saul is coming, who I want you to make a great man. Nice is to say, tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. We are still talking about Saul. And thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is common to me. First Samuel 10, 13. And when he had made an end of prophesy, he came to the high place. We saw the encounter that uh, Saul had with Samuel. But what am I trying to bring it there? As he was just coming out, in first Samuel 10, 14, he said, And son's uncle, that is the village people, appeared. So as son's uncle said unto him, and to his servant, Whither went he? What was his problem? Why was he interested? And he said, and he, as I said, to seek the asses. And when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to somewhere. Was that answer not enough? But because he was looking for destiny to kill. 10.15 And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto thee. What was he interested in? He just want to stagnate the destiny of a great man. But Saul was very quick. He was intelligent. The Bible made us to say, And Saul said unto his uncle, he told us plainly that the asses were found. But of the matter of the kingdom, whereof Samuel speak, he told him not. We knew that he went ahead to make mistakes by sacrificing when he's supposed to obey. But we would not have been reading about Saul if he had told the uncle exactly about the kingdom that Saul, uh, Samuel told him. Praise the Lord. God will give us the discernment of the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And another young man, Joseph, we saw this, we know the story of Joseph, the dreamer, I dreamt in his father's house, and uh, what befell him, I was taken and he found himself in the house of the uh, uh, Potiphar. But what I just want to bring out is that temptation that would have sealed his, that would have you know, uh, made his being great in the land of Egypt impossible. What the devil want to use to nail his greatness. In Genesis 39.5, the Bible said, and it came to pass from time that he made him overseer in his house. We are talking about Potiphar. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. 39 says, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. That is a sign of greatness. 39 7. And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. And we know that if Joseph had done that bidding, she was another village people that was sent after the life of Joseph. Thank God that Joseph was saved from that. Praise the Lord. If I may bring this one in, you see, when you really, when God is really taking you to somewhere, there are so many challenges and so many obstacles that you get. The ability and the way with which you handle them will actually determine how far you go in life and how far the heights that you can attain. As a young man in June 1983, I finished my work. I came to Lagos October 5, 1983, exactly. By November 4, the same 1983, I started the job with my testimony. But there was a national item every day in the house that would be sung to our hair. That the woman of the house told us that it's not when she's alive that my brother will sponsor the brother in education, in any education, that she will never allow it. She will just call you, I will just tell you that, for, for example, now that my husband said he wants to sponsor you. For why? But we just kept it. We said, okay. But I knew that God would do it. But when God did it, it was like a miracle. My brother was so pious, even when he was a Muslim then, was so pious, I was God-fearing. It was one way that none of us we ever thought that he would marry a second wife. But at the nick of time, when my admission was to come, a second wife came into the house. And 
the second wife put it in my brother's mind, you must train this guy. If I went and got the first check for my deposit, then 750 naira, I never believed it could come. Praise the Lord. There are challenges everywhere. You're staying at the foot of the masters and the way with which you, you handle the challenges also depends how far you can go. Uh, we never argued. When he began to tell us every morning that over a dead body, will your brother's puzzle any of you to any other school apart from this secondary school we have? We just kept quiet. But when it was time, God took us through. Praise the Lord. And God will intervene on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you want to be great, what are those steps that you need to do? I said, one, flee from every avenue of being cursed. You see, when we were growing up, there were so, some, of, some of the children we grew up that uh, we felt that they had broken away. One, they came to Lagos earlier than us. So they would come and told us, tell us so many stories about Lagos. And we were thinking that, yes, these ones have gone. But they keep on engaging in one bad vice or the other. And for every corner they go to, they get cost. People lay courses on them. But I tell you of the truth, most of them are eating from the back of a counter. They are selling. They are not that they are own the booker. They are helping people to sell. Praise the Lord. I said for a person to be great in life, there are so many things that others do that you cannot do. You cannot afford to be labeled and giving names that is not yours. Stealing everything that comes your way, having illicit affair with the opposite, flagrantly, that you are known to be an oncomer. That everybody in this in the village just know you. Everybody in your street don't know you, and they begin to point figure. Having no respect for both for elders and constituted authority. You feel that because you are feeling some powers in your inside, that you can insult anybody and you can do anyhow. You will be called names, you will be caused, and people can put spells and jinx upon your life, and that may battle you, you for all the rest of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said in First Timothy 5, I say, rebuke not an elder, but he treat him as a father, and the younger men as brother. Praise the Lord. God will give us the ability to stay away from being caused in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, don't defy yourself. Do not defy yourself. There are certain things that you cannot take in. There are certain food you cannot eat. There are certain evil gifts that you cannot take. In Daniel 1.8, we saw it in the life of Daniel. The Bible says, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Then the one fifteen says, at the end of the ten days, their countenances appear fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children. We did eat the portion of the king's meat. One nineteen, and the king commanded, communed with them, and among among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Michel, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. One ten, he said, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king required of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were on his realm. We understand that story very well. Why he became great is because he refused to defile himself. Praise the Lord. God will give us the ability to say yes and mean yes and say no and mean no in the name of Jesus. Number three, I say avoid greed. Do not be overtly greedy and covetous. They said you, the elephant you carry on your head is not enough. Is it the cricket that you want to use your hand to hold that will do anything for you? No. Greed has led a lot of potentially greedy people to derail. If it is time for you to manifest, you will manifest. You will manifest. Greed is addictive to the extent that when you start involving yourself in it, you won't know when to stop. You will like to have everything and anything that comes your way. That you can lay your hand to. It can lead to death, disgrace, and derailment in life. You are just employed. You have the potential. You can work. You know the job. But there is a manager on, ahead of you. You want to become that manager by fire, by force. Praise the Lord. You can just derail yourself and you get kicked out of that place. Proverbs 14 to said, There is a way which remains right not to man, but the end thereof are ways of death. 
Let me tell you um, the greed, how greed killed the monkey. In Brazil, there's a trick which they used to, to catch a monkey. There is a bottle that has a narrow neck. The bottle can allow a knot to be placed inside the bottle and it can allow the, 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 the knot to fall out. It can also allow the hand of a monkey quietly to go inside that bottle. But it cannot allow the, the monkey's hand and the knot to come out. So what they will just simply do is to tie the, the bottle to a tree. And the monkey will come I will put his hand into the bottle and grab the knot. And he will be making an attempt to remove his hand, which is of no use. He will try so much that even when the hunters are coming with the gun, the monkey will not allow the knot to go and run away. He will still hold the knot because of greed until he's killed. Praise the Lord. We will not, we will not experience that in our life in the name of Jesus. I said, stay where your strength and skill sets lie. Every one of us have skill sets. It, if not everybody that must be an entrepreneur, if everybody is an entrepreneur, who is going to work for who? The Bible said that he make them high and lonely. Sorry, it's an aim. He make them high and lonely and order them their estates. I said, some may choose to be an entrepreneur because that is their fault. Everybody is wired differently. Everything it isn't for everyone. There are people that if you start business for them today, in the morning, by the evening, that business has collapsed because that is not, they are not wired for that. And everyone has their roles to play in this life. So stay where your strength and your skill set lie. From the frontline worker to the chief executive, there is a place for everybody in between. Why some have the capacity to be entrepreneurs, other excel as being entrepreneurs. Face where your bread is well buttered. If you are going to work for a person, you like work for people, you can work for people and you can perform your job very well and you can get remunerated very well. Face your front. Praise the Lord. As we begin to make choices in life, may God direct us where in Jesus' name. I said in the number next, attach yourself to a spiritual sword. Feed from the master's table. For every man that is great outside there has one higher force that he or she bows to. Even when they tell you that, don't worry. It's either he's going to church or he has amulet in his pocket. Or there is a force that he shall bow to. These things do not just come like that because the devil don't like you, the moment you are walking the path of greatness, the devil has come. Praise the Lord. If you don't have the backing of a spiritual force, you will soon become a prey in the half of those who think that you are standing on their way and your quest to become great will be truncated. The moment you are employed to an office, whether you are a messenger, whether you are the middle manager, there is somebody somewhere that who think that you are offending, that you think you are offending him. If you are the messenger, I think that you are getting too much favor from the boss and they want you out of the way. If you are the boss, they will think that you are carrying yourself too high. And who is see self? Every day is walking shoulder high. You are my just be yourself. We all have swagger. The way God created us to walk. But it will turn it to be that you are doing shakara. Praise the Lord. It is a parable in my place that they said that the lion that said, I don't have the owner. Uh, the animal that says I don't have the owner is the liar that uses it as pepper soup in the forest. Praise the Lord. So you have to have who you report to spiritually. Praise the Lord. No, but I say, I say be persistent, determined, and resolute. Like I've said before, there are challenges in life. Many challenges. The only person that won't get challenged is the person that the devil knows that is useless. That is why you see madmen they sleep alone at the bus stop and nobody bother them. They eat anything and they don't get sick. But as far as the devil knows that there is a drop of that greatness is, is in you, it will fight you. And they want to fight you as down. So be persistent, be determined, and be resolute. When one door closes, another one is open. But if you look at it technically, all doors were open before. 
It's because of your physician and your attention on one door. That is why you do not know that all of that doors were open. So I think they are going to change it. All doors are open. It is not when one door closes. When one door is closed, it's closing to your face, a door that had been open before, does not mean that other doors were not open. It's just because we were so, you no, know, fixated that we were so occupied with that door, that is why you didn't see that it were open because of your preoccupation. As we continue to look beyond uh, our, our outside, God will give us direction in the mighty name of Jesus. Number seven, I say, know what your mentor or destiny helper want and like. What does the person that you feel they want to help you, what does it want, what does it like? Because the moment you go against what he or she like, in fact, you have started the fight. I say, be in consonance with the beliefs and the like of your destiny helper. If your thoughts are not in tandem with he that will help, help you, then you need help. Because if you have discovered that this is the person that is going to help me, and your thoughts are not in them, then you need a helper. Well, I will want us to look at what happened between uh, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. The Bible said in Genesis 25, 8, it said, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Now, in that said, in Genesis 27, 3, he now said to Esau, Say, Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me sovereign meat such as I love, and bring to me that I may eat, that my soul be blessed before I die. Be know exactly what your benef benefactor know what your destiny ever want and key to it. Praise the Lord. As we begin to do that, God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. If I may also recall when we came to Lagos, as we were sitting, a group of other boys came. And you know, as it is, it is a practice, when somebody comes into your house, you must necessity first of all, give them food, give them water to bathe. So they gave them food, they gave them water to bait, and after we have eaten, the man was calling them one by one. Say you, why did you come to Lagos? This one said, I come to look for work. Say, how many credit do you have? He said, two. So what do you think you want to do with two credits? He said, he said that, you know, he said the uh, uh, office assistant. He said, I cannot look for office assistant for any person in my, in my place. I cannot look for a cleaner. I can look for office assistant. I was hearing. Call the second one. Say, so what do you want to, to do? That one don't, didn't even go to school. He said he came to look for what? With what? Say, so you are going back to the bottom. As they called the third one, because he has listened to the other two previous ones, said they want to learn mechanic. So you want to learn mechanic. So tomorrow I'll take you to where you are going to learn mechanic. But what I brought out from there that this man like anybody that want to go to school. So before you know, I went to him and said, brother, I want to enroll for GC. He said, you are not matured enough. When he told me I'm not matured enough, I thought he was insulting me. That was 1983. He said, you are not matured enough. But when I was not matured enough, I didn't even need to tell him. I just went and did the GC. When the result came, I went to him where he was sitting there in the office. I told him, I said, this is my result. He just said, with this you can do accounting. Praise the Lord. Understand what he wants. If I have come to tell him that I want to become a mechanic, he will drive me out of his office. But because I brought a like book, so I brought the product of book and the sashay. it. Praise the Lord. Number eight, I say don't rush to be announced too early that God just bless you. You begin to run. You want people to know. Packaging is another thing. Oh. You can package yourself. That packaging doesn't really speak. You don't tell people because you are so dressed and better that you know. It's people that be, you know, interpreting it in a different way. I tell you a story. When we were very young, you know, when you are young, you have you know, some dangerous thoughts. So I told my guy, I said, Come, I want to do, I, I'm interested in magic. Say, that is like my father can teach you. I said, Okay. I said, But do you know the one I like? I want to be very unique. 
He said, what? I said, I'll just go to the market. Just look at somebody's good. I'll just steal it. And when they say, hey, 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 I'll just burst into fire. I'll just burn completely. Meanwhile, I'm somewhere else. He said, don't worry, I'll take you to my father. He actually took, took me to the father. And I've narrated everything to the father. The father laughed. He said, no, you know even that I said, he said, you. He said, if I just teach you that you do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this now. Say, what is the time? I told him. Say, in another one hour, I will hear noise at the marketplace. Say, by the time I get there, you are the one performing magic. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, you are not mature then. <laughs> so, you rush to go and I say, and that will kill you. Praise the Lord. May we not see what will kill us in the mighty name of Jesus. No, but now I say, set your word and position yourself. I'm just talking about packaging just now. You package yourself. Uh, I remember in Stocks Watch, we had an issue. And Oga told me that what do we do? I said, we need a crack marketer. And I brought a crack marketer that cannot crack anything. And somebody told me, he said, ah, you package your bishop. <laughs> Then you package the bishop. I was doing the work that Obi was doing. That is packaging. And it is said in my place, we know a God. A God have a narrow neck. While the calabash have a wide face. That is the calabash that makes itself a washout basin. That is why they wash hand into it. The God, they use it to drink water. It's respected. When you drink water, you keep it. But the, God, the calabash, you wash hand on it. That is packaging. The calabash package itself to be washed that basin. Why the God package itself to be where they drink water with? Praise the Lord. I said, learn from other people's mistakes. The journey to greatness is frustrated with details and diverse science posts, so that if you are not discerning enough, making of mistakes is inevitable. But it is too risky for you to learn from your own mistakes. You'll be too late. For you to learn from your own mistake. Learning from one mistake can be fatal and can have a lifelong adverse effect. So try and learn from other people's mistakes. I will make tremendous progress. I want to use this analogy learning from other people's mistake. There once lived a man those days who sell hats. So while he was on a journey selling his hat, passing through uh, a, a bush path, he was tired, so he sat under a tree and properly fell asleep. So he woke up and discovered that all his art, monkeys have taken all his hats and they were all weary then. So the guy was not surprised. So in a scratch, he said, he saw that all the monkeys scratched their head. He removed his cap. All the monkeys removed their caps and he threw it to the ground. All the monkeys threw their hands to the ground. So the man collected his hat and went on his journey. But 50 years down the line, one of the grass son was also selling hat. I was passing the same way. And as fate will always happen, the man also felt tired, sat under the tree, and fell asleep. By the time he woke up, he discovered that the monkeys had carried his hat. You know, he has been told the story. So he scratched his head, and the monkeys scratched their head too. He removed his hat, and the monkeys removed his hat. He now threw his hat down. One of the monkeys came down and picked the hat. I just went to him, I slapped, gave him his stuff. He said, go and see that. Is it only you that have grandfather? Don't you know that our grandfather has also told us that that was what your father told us? Praise the Lord. So learn from other people's mistakes. The monkeys learned from their grandfather's mistake. That was why they went away with those uh, at praise the Lord. No, but I said, told the path of greatness. You have to pay the price. The, it is commonly said that he that wants to eat omelette must what? Crack an egg. You cannot just put egg there and be wishing that they are toasted. If you stay low too long, you will manifest lowness. It is often said that when soap stay longer on, on leaves, before you know both the soap and leaves, you will not know the difference. Praise the Lord. 
God will give us the designer of the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Number next, I say don't be competing with somebody you are supposed to be learning from. A number of people do make that mistake. Somebody you are supposed to be learning from, you are not competing with him. I say don't try to chill with the big boys because you might be chilling with the wrong boys. Never be led by ambition or the desire to perform great things at a young age. Never involve in things too wonderful for you. You may be swift, but be wise and adult life at your level. And simply as God leads you. Even if you are your age and achieving great things, don't be pressured by that to want to achieve your own. Live your God-given life by time and grow into your achievement. That is what is causing Yahoo Yahoo that we see. Swiftness and speed is not a sign of great strength. Wisdom is needed to guide a man. You must not be too ambitious or hot. Neither should you involve yourself in things do great for you. In Second Samuel, from Second Samuel two, from verse seventy to twenty-three, there is a story of a young man, Asahel, who would have grown to be a very great man of valor and a mighty man of battle. He decided to chill with the big boys, but instead he was chilling with the wrong boys. Give me Second Samuel two. From verse 17 to 23, the Bible said, And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten. We know the story very well. I don't want to bring out what the guy did that he shouldn't have done. And the men of Israel before the servant of David, 18, and there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab and Abisha and Asahel. And Asahel was as light of foot as a white drove. That was how the Bible described him. So it was light of a foot as a wide road. And as I pursued after Abner, and he going, he turned not to the right hand, nor to the left for following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, I'll die as I have, and he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand, or to the left, and lay the hold on one of the young men, and take this armor. He just looked at him, small boy, don't pursue after me. Why don't you find this small one you can deal with? He said, but as I would not turn aside from following him. The, as the Bible said, the said was very swift. Number 22, and Abner said again to Asai, turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? I then should I hold up my face to Joab, thy brother. 23, I be it. He refused to turn aside. He was, he wanted to chill with the, the, the big boys. He was chilling with the wrong boys. Wherefore, Abner, with the inner end of the spear, he did not even say the main blade. It was the bomb bomb of the spear. With the inner end of the inner end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rim, that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there and died in the same spot. Praise the Lord. May God give us the ability to listen in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, lastly, I said, don't overwhelm yourself. Seek to one thing at a time. You are not lazy, but you can only be paralyzed by too many desires. Your mind wants 1,000 things at one time, making it completely, stopping you from moving at all. Break the circle. Choose that one thing and direct your focus at it. Praise the Lord. I pray today that as you begin to put this in your mind, that God will give you the ability to, to put them into practice, and God will raise you to become great in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.